In this video, I will be teaching you how to use our continued recipe layout. Now, if you look over here, this recipe on my left page, the baby artichokes recipe, is flowing past this page number and running off the page. Um, so I don't want that, but I still want to keep my direction step numbers. Let me show you how to do that. I'm gonna go over here to this little warning sign, and it's gonna say the content for the direction steps appears too tall for this layout. So add a continued recipe page. All right, so I'll click OK. Now it's going to come up. It's going to be a little confusing because it's going to show me all of my steps. That's OK. I'm going to trust the process, trust the system. Go ahead and just click Save. And it's going to overflow those um, extra steps over here onto the right page. Um, and just push that other page over here. Um, and so now I have both, both of these pages showing my full recipe and it ends at 10, step 10, and it goes on to step 11. Now, if I wanted to, I could remove those step numbers. All I would have to do is click the edit button, choose the direction step number drop down, hide the step numbers, save, save, and it's still going to overflow because these lines are broken down but it'll still flow onto this next page. It'll remove the step numbers. Everything will look perfect. So what can you do and what can't you do with this continue recipe? Now you cannot put another recipe in between these two pages. That will mess it up. So let me just show you that really quickly. Arrange pages. If I were to put this recipe in between, it's going to give me a warning right here that says only picture pages and story pages may be used between a recipe page and its recipe continuation pages. So I know that that's not right. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that back. But I will show you that what I can do is I can put a picture in between. So if I wanted to, I could put this picture here and there would be no warning, it would be totally fine. This could also be a story page. So if I wanna go ahead and edit that, change the layout to a story page, I could, you know, story, here's my story. I could have that here, and then the next page would be the second page to the recipe. Um, but if I didn't want anything, that works too. So that's how it works. Um, it's super great. You can keep going if I needed a third page, a fourth page, a fifth page. Uh, that would be okay too. I can also choose any numbered step recipe layout I want for this first page. So let me show you. If I hit edit, go to the layout. Now I have this long recipe page with numbered steps selected right now, but if I wanted to also include a photo, I could choose this one. And we'll go over to the picture tab and just, we'll just drop in this photo of cinnamon rolls for the test. And just show you that it is, see how it's showing that it's overflowing? What we're gonna do is hit save. And it's still going to flow my recipes onto this next page. And I can have a photo. So that's really cool. Um, I can also choose this layout right here. These are the only three. So you have this full page recipe with the numbered steps. You have a full page recipe with a small picture and you have the long recipe page with numbered steps. So let me just show you this first one too. Go ahead and hit save. And again, this is what it looks like and it's still overflowing my recipes onto the next page perfectly. So those are your options. I hope this really helps you um, and alleviates some trouble when you have those longer recipes because I know it's really nice to see all those steps broken down because your other option would be to go to the layout and choose the long recipe page that puts all the steps onto one paragraph, which isn't really easy to read. So in order to avoid that, I recommend using one of the numbered steps layouts and using the continued recipe page. So good luck, have fun. Uh, if you have any trouble at all, please feel free to email support at createmycookbook.com. We're always here to help you.